I, I saw, I actually saw a YouTube video uh, that caught my eye and it's uh, by a therapist. And she's doing kind of a deep dive on teen programs um, that deal, so when you send your teen away to a program to turn them around type of thing. And this is something we did when she was 16, a junior, so. And I woke up this morning um, from a te with a text from and she had uh, included a, an attachment. It was just an attachment and it was a girl that had gone to this boarding school, corrective school, whatever you want to call it, in Utah. With, and apparently there's this movement right now um, breaking the code of silence for these kids that went to these types of schools and learning what was going on it, behind the scenes of the school and so I wanted to respect um, what she was trying to show me and so I went on the website and I read a few testimonials and then I saw someone mention Paris Hilton so I went and started watching that and seeing what happened at these schools and knowing that I sent my daughter to one of these schools is really um, heartbreaking because sometimes you think you're doing what's right for your child and perhaps you've caused them more pain and suffering. <laughs> sometimes I already feel like I wasn't able to protect her from the stupid disorder and all of the issues. And so when she moved, she moved out of my house and into, went with her father to North Carolina, which was very painful, but that's what she wanted to do. And I didn't feel like I could handle her at that point so uh, she got shoved into a school a totally different school in a city where she was in a small school before that and she started experimenting with um drugs and i wasn't there to see it but i spoke to her dad a lot and um we we thought we were saving her from herself. We thought by sending her to this boarding school that she would learn discipline. We had told her so many times that if she couldn't follow our rules, you know, which were simple house rules, then we would send her somewhere where she would learn how, she would learn how to follow discipline. To me, it was kind of like, military school where you just you you kind of learn through life there's discipline the whole cell phone posting things and social media i think is hugely to blame for a lot of these problems and at this school social media was not allowed uh, i they could use computers but they couldn't have their cell phones and they didn't worry about wearing makeup and they worked with horses and they went on camping trips and she tried foods she wouldn't normally try uh, with us and there seemed to be a lot of good things they seemed to do a lot of outings and rock climbing and um, things she hadn't done with us so she was there for several months and Finally, and it was her father who, it's kind of funny because it's her father who <laughs> kind of started the process to get her there, but he also decided it was time to bring her home and I'm really glad he did. 
and there was a lot of money put into this place. I just pray that she didn't go through some of the horrors I've heard some of these other kids, but it has to be tough being sent to a school in a totally other place. And it seems like a lot of these are Utah Mormon schools and we are not religious. We don't enforce that. The school said that they don't enforce the Mormonism on the kids, but clearly they do. And I just want to say from a mom's perspective, and I'm not making excuses, had I any idea, of course, I would not send my child to a place like that. I really, really thought that we were helping her. I mean, why would we dish all this money into a place if it's not going to help? And I tried to research the school and I found positive testimonials. And of course, there's two sides to every story, and I'm sure the school has their side, but... I just want to say for the record, I'm sorry that we sent you to a school that may have caused you more harm than good. I hope you're able to take that time and become a stronger person because you're a really strong person. And maybe you can help others through your experience. And that's what I'm hoping. I mean, other parents need to know what's going on so they don't send their kids there so it's a yes is it important for the kids to know of course and for them to speak their voice yes but parents need to know too so that they don't send their kids there because they're the ones sending their kids there and they're suffering too if their child is suffering from from a decision that they made so um i, I hope parents out there I figure it out and I want to just say I'm sorry to all of these kids that suffered from a decision that their parents made even if they made it with the best of intent. The whole thing's shitty and I hope that it comes to light and that these types of places will be closed if indeed these things are happening and I just wanted to put it out there because I had just seen the videos and if I had put it off I may not have done this because it's not easy to do so I'm sorry and to all of you kids out there that have suffered I'm gonna say as a parent um, and hopefully your parents would feel the same way that we are truly truly sorry that you suffered Uh, she went to a place called Stillwater Academy in Utah, okay? Now, keep in mind, I was that dumb and naive to not even pin together Mormonism with Utah. And anyway, the Academy itself said it had nothing, it wasn't Mormon, blah, blah, blah. Like, I, obviously, hindsight, stupid, should have known better, whatever. I didn't. She was living with her dad at the time. There were a lot of things going on in that household that I didn't really realize at the time, but I, she uh, had had a hospitalization and she started um, dabbling with pills. She got suspended from school, uh, started doing some things that I, I, I'm not even going go into at all, but there were some very concerning things and it made me concerned with her for her safety. We sent her to this place. Her dad flew her there. She knew she, where she was going, so it wasn't one of those, uh, we're gonna kidnap her in the middle of the night thing, which I think is really weird. And I guess some places do that. She knew, uh, she knew where she was going. Did she want to go? No, I don't think she fought it too, too much, but uh, I don't know. She spent some time there. My perception of it is obviously going to be different than her perception of it. She did not have access to drugs or social media, and to me, that made it worth it. Now, we had said to her time and time again that we were going to do this if she continued on the path she was on. So we told her, if you continue doing drugs, or if you continue sneaking out, if you continue being completely disrespectful, if you continue 
doing some things at school that are getting you in trouble, then we're going to send you to a place where you'll have no choice. And we told her that more than once, so we felt we need needed to follow through, which at this point, we were both at our wit's end. She didn't want to live with me. She was very, very disrespectful towards me, towards towards most adults at this point. But anyway, I, I keep regressing and I'm not, I'm really, I'm trying to give my point of view, but the big picture is I'm curious as to what may have taken place here. She did, has not said anything in particular other than it was traumatic. She didn't have access to social media. And so she lived with the way it works there is you live with different families, you rotate through, so you're staying with a different family every couple weeks or something like that. So in our perspective, she was um, doing okay, seemed to be doing well, but her perspective's totally different and they do segregate you from your kid. So you can talk to them, but it's only like once every couple weeks and we did video chat and then we did have I was able to write letters. Uh, she didn't really write to me, but I, I wrote her letters all the time, which apparently she didn't appreciate. But <laughs> I, I'm feeling compelled to look into it a little more because I do want to make up for a mistake I feel I made. And I do feel that was an error. I feel that if I could go back and do it again, I would have done more research. I would have done more. I did do research, but at that point, I felt really like we were in an emergency situation, a dire situation, and I was panicked, and I felt I was going to do anything to save her life. This seemed like, at that time, the best option, because she seemed that out of control. She did stay there for about a year. Her dad went and picked her up and got her out of there, and I'm, to this day, grateful, and it in my opinion, it's because he didn't really want to pay for it any longer and wasn't seeing enough change that um, could justify the payment. But whatever it was, he did go get her. He pulled her out of there. I'm glad. But I will say when she came back and lived with me after that experience, she did really well for a year. She was really good. Like we, it was a normal teen experience. So I want to make it clear when she came out of there she was doing well she did well and she thrived for a bit so there is that now it didn't last once she went to college and started using cannabis again that all kind of went downhill and that's where the nightmare really begins but I, I just I want to tell my side of that sort of but I also want to say I'm getting the feeling that I should talk about this and maybe if any of you out there are considering something like this which is really highly expensive and then do your research and I'll link a video that I started watching that's doing a deep dive into it so before you do anything like this please think twice about it because it very well could cause more trauma and I think there, are, I, I did see some positives where she started eating foods that were um, healthier and she did well in school. She made some very creative artwork, the most I've ever seen her do. So they did go to school, they got grades. They showed, when we went to visit, we saw the work she was doing. We met with each of the teachers. So she did seem to be thriving at that time. However, if you ask now, she'll say it was traumatic. So that's kind of what I'd like to get into is, I guess what my point is, if you are considering this type of thing, don't do it yet. Just do your research and understand that as great as this may sound, from my perspective, from other parents' perspectives, the kids are saying otherwise. And if it really did help them, why wouldn't they admit that it helped them? Why would they come out and lie about it? They're not going to. So listen to the kid's perspective on this. Uh, the person that was, that was put there. Go, instead of reading parents' reviews and listening to parents' reviews, please go listen to what the kids are saying. 
because it's their perspective that matters. And if they are being traumatized, it's not worth putting your kid into a place that might traumatize them even more. They're already going through a difficult time. So there's another way to get through this and it's not by sending them away. I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm gonna run inside. I think I'm going to contact her. So there was a couple there that took care of her. They were in the program, but she would rotate through, like I said, different families. And that, that family she really bonded with. I don't think that they're involved with it anymore. And I'm, I might reach out and just ask them why. Uh, I, I'd like to get a little insight as to what might have taken place there because again, I made the error of not researching before, but I don't need to make the error by not following through and perhaps it would help her heal if I take that extra energy to find out what may have happened and to apologize to her and admit to that. And so I think that's what I'd like to do to help repair a mistake that I clearly made. Because as parents, as difficult as the kids may seem, we are certainly not perfect and we do need to recognize the part we play in this entire situation. There is no, nobody was right and wrong here. There's to show them the lesson I learned and hope they don't have to go through the hurdles I did to learn it. I do think that's important. And if she ever watches these to apologize to her for my part in it. And I have done that, don't get me wrong, but I've been defensive too. So I need to really reflect and I, I need to forgive myself. And by doing that, I need to apologize for the mistakes that I, the errors that I've made in judgment. I'm going to leave it at that. Everyone have a wonderful day. I'll let you know how the day goes. Talk to you after work. When it came to that whole sending her to Utah to Stillwater Academy, uh, which the school for um, troubled teens, troubled teens, huh. um, I did feel compelled to contact one of her um, house mothers, the one that she got along with very well. And they were a great couple. I'm still actually Facebook friends with her. Like we don't, we don't talk that often, but we did when my daughter was staying with her. And anyway, she's become close to um, a couple of the girls that have stayed there one of them very very close to she said the one that was the most difficult she actually really bonded with and even got a tattoo of the girl's name like just really took the girl under her wing and the girl's now in the military and doing very well so that is awesome uh so there are just keep in mind there are some uh positive outcomes from being there so this girl went there she had a lot of issues she was again one of the most troubled teens at that time and now she's decided to enroll in the military doing very well got her act together so there are some success stories and I don't know that I don't know that you'll find much of that I don't know how often these kids are really gonna write about their success stories but uh, just to just to see both sides of it I still don't I still don't um, agree with the decision I made to send her but I did talk to the lady for quite a bit and she just reminded me don't beat beat myself up I thought I was doing the right thing that um, I told her that my daughter said it was a traumatic experience but she didn't know of anything offhand that would have been traumatic per se. I don't know. She she doesn't work there anymore, and she said she doesn't work there because she didn't. It went downhill after the pre previous owners left. So I, it was a a man and wife that ran it, and now somebody else has taken over, and I guess they're. Um, she doesn't agree with whatever 
the way they're running things. She did say to me, she's sure that my daughter did get some good out of it. And I really hope that's true. And one thing she did get good out of it was their support and friendship. And so she did, she says she's been in touch with my daughter on and off. And she says she'd really like for her to come visit and she would really like to stay in touch with her. And so I'm gonna keep her abreast of what's going on and I'll give her the number when I can that she could reach my daughter or I'll give my daughter the number to reach her or whatever. Um, I think it would be really awesome. Oh, I got a package. I don't know what I ordered. I think it would be really awesome to for them to reconnect. And I just talked to her about um, how my daughter really needs people in her life that care about her because she's, she's pushed a lot of people away and I think it's because of the shame she feels and she feels judged for, judged. She feels judged, period. And she doesn't like that and she pushes people away. It makes me sad. So yeah, I, I'm hoping that they can, uh, I hope they can reconnect. I would love for my daughter to be able to go see her. I would help play, pay for a plane ticket for her to do that. Her dad actually does work in Utah, Utah so perhaps um, she could fly with him. I don't know. We'll figure it out. First, we have to get through this next process. So that's the other thing I was gonna talk about real quick was I got a call. I, the only person I've heard from is from the psychiatrist. He had a medical emergency last night, apparently, and the hospital never contacted me. So of course it's taking everything in my power not to call there and say, why wasn't I notified of this? Hello everyone. <sighs> I am, this is a big sigh of, I don't even know what. I'm just, whew, I feel like I'm a little drained energetically. I made the mistake, well, not a mistake, but I ended up watching a documentary about something called the Elon School, which was right here in Maine, and it's one of those places for troubled teens, that's whatever, and I just, I just did a, a clip about this, um, the other day because my daughter had been to one of those schools for 10 months and I'm greatly regretting that decision. And of course, watching this damn documentary made it that much worse, but the way I see it, I should have watched the damn thing before I sent her, not after, but we did it in a panic. And I, I'm a researcher and I didn't have I guess I didn't really have the time to research. Uh, she was in North Carolina with her dad and something had to be done because she was being very destructive and dangerous and neither of us could, neither of us knew what to do. I'm gonna leave it at that. I feel horrible about sending her there and then I just heard, trying not to cry, I just heard on this, friggin documentary the shit that they went through at that school was appalling and traumatic and literally made me sick to my stomach that school was right here in this state and I'd heard I think I'd heard about it but I, because I used to work for Department of Health and Human Services so I used to work where I knew a lot of the agencies and that, um, that dealt with um, kids. Like I worked at a group home for adolescent kids that were in state custody. So uh, where, you know, kids were treated nothing like that, let me assure you. I, I, I'm a little speechless. So, because I watched it at work as I was working, I listened to it. 
and it just, it's making me really think long and hard again about everything my daughter's been through, going through the system and the hospitals. And I get, hospitals are regulated, regulated like, I don't think you, I'm sure it can be abusive at times. I'm not sure of that. I'm going to guess that it's not pleasant at all times, but the way the laws work, I mean, there is no way you could do the crap that was going on at this place in a hospital. That being said, it just, my daughter's been through such trauma and it's not her damn fault. Well, it's not her fault. It's just, I'm doing a lot of processing on film right now, I get that. But this is what, this is why I'm doing it. This is the whole point is for other parents, kids, whoever might find this interesting um, to see what it's like in real time. You can watch movies about this crap all day long and, but you're not getting the real true emotion that's happening at that time. So the other thing is I heard from the psychiatrist because I, they wanted me to sign a consent form. So that's where I'm at. I know I'm not being my Zen coming from my higher self right now. I do want to reconnect in that way. I need to go sit outside. I need to just meditate. And when I say meditate, it just means sit and think. I've trusted the professionals in the past. I've trusted these professionals for six years now. And guess what? These professionals effed up and misdiagnosed and mismedicated. So I'm done with that. I gotta go because I'm gonna rant forever if I don't. I hope everyone has a lovely weekend and I will likely chime in before next week, but who knows, we'll see what happens or not. Bye guys.